So on today's show, we have two guys making a name for themselves out in Florida in the short-term rental game, but this is not your basic buy and hold play. We get into a business model we like to call rental arbitrage. We're going to talk about how you can do it, how to position yourself with these property owners, and how to make a lot of money using other people's houses. Welcome to the show. Guys, like we said, we are back here and we want to introduce you guys to two fantastic investors that we are both very, very excited to have here on our own podcast locally in Las Vegas. I know you guys have traveled quite a way. So without any further ado, let me introduce you to JB and Aiden and their company is called Blue Gems and they are both out of Florida. So welcome to Vegas, guys. Thanks for having us. Thank really you. For Thanks for coming on. Well, out here so. for the Clever uh, <laughs> Investor Summit. We were there this morning. Mm-hmm. Yep dropping awesome. bombs those those guys out there so some heavy hitters out there but yeah. i'm glad we got you guys in because honestly you guys are pretty pretty heavy hitters so let's go ahead and Appreciate boost that. you guys up a little bit let's do it. inflate the egos a little bit go. but i want to get into like the strategy what makes it worth it and how to do it right yeah, I mean, I think that uh, when when I first start, started getting into um, Airbnbs, uh, my wife and I had a back unit cottage, a little ADU. And um, we've heard the, the strategy of house hacking so often where yeah. you, know, you live in one unit, get your mortgage paid for, live there completely. It's a great free. way to start. Live in one, rent out 100%. the rest, pay the mortgage, exactly. maybe cash flow. 100%. That's exactly way. what we did in um, Winter Park, uh, Florida. And... Um, we haven't paid a mortgage since we've been there. You know, we, we actually cash flow around three or four hundred dollars over our mortgage and all expenses. Uh, that's when my wife and I were like, "Holy shit, yeah. <laughs> this could work! This could work!" You know, but with with repetition, you never know if you just got lucky or mm-hmm. you know, was this one just a fluke? Let's try it again. So um, we practice what's called rental arbitrage. Yep, yep. yep. You guys are familiar with that, but for the audience, uh, basically, we got a hold of a landlord. Um, negotiated a, a good um, rent rate and then um, had the sublease of that to be able to rent it out on Airbnb. Right. And we'll cash flow what we um, take home after anything the, over the rent. Uh, over which the is rent. huge. Exactly. Because rent, right. rent is going to be low. Yep. The Airbnb income is going to be huge. Yep. I love that. I love that yep. business model. So that that brought us in like net 2200 a month from, you know, barely putting any money up front. Now my wife and I are like, okay, we didn't get lucky with this one. We could do this. We can really do this. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, in the last 12 months, we scaled to 10, uh, 10 more that we purchased. So we're at 12 total, all nice. STR, short-term rentals. Um, everything's making more than 20% cash on cash return. That's kind of our benchmark. Uh, roughly, we're probably around 35, 40% cash on cash return. And um, yeah, you don't need too many of those to, to start making no. some money. No. You know? What was the experience like having strangers on your property all the time because the ones that we're building and we can get into the ones that we're buying i'm not there i don't live there i'm not dealing with any of the people and so was that convenient was it a headache they're what was just it sneaking like? in and out of right. the back gate in all the, the time backyard. great, like, how does great question work? great question um this one is designed pretty uniquely where they have their separate entrance and it's okay. completely detached so i literally never see them at all awesome. so i mean it's very convenient um you know it doesn't bother my wife at all. We never see the guests. You uh, still have your privacy. We still have our okay. very much our privacy. That's what kind of people, it, unless it's unless it's a duplex where obviously you have two units and a wall, that was like what kind of concern would be like, if, can I look out my back window and see people? Arguably, we have more, you know, um, I guess privacy than a duplex, you know, because it really is completely detached. Got it. Yeah. yeah. No, that totally makes sense. So. Um, second one was the arbitrage thing. So that's a very interesting concept because the ownership of real estate is totally left off the table. All you need to do is essentially find a place where the landlord's willing to let you do that rent. When you go in there, what I've heard to not convince, but basically like make a good deal and proof yourself to those landlords is that, hey, I know that you have this property and this is what I'm going to do with it. But just so you know, I'm not a degenerate or I'm not going to do anything wrong with it. I'm putting money into the deal myself. I'm going to 
rehab the property or I'm going to obviously furnish it, make it ready. Did you have to rehab it? You have to put your own dollars into it as well as renting it from them? We or did. do you negotiate a higher rent? Yeah, do you that's tell what them like, do. okay, market's at a thousand bucks a month. I'm going to pay you 1700 $1, a month or 1200 Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe 10, 10 to 20% more higher than mortgage or, or than uh, market rents. Mm -hmm. yeah. But that's not necessary. You know, um, they could be looking for a long-term tenant. They could say, hey, you know, we can sign a two-year lease, for instance. Another um, thing that we offer to, uh, you know, our landlord is that anything over or under $200 we will take care of you know, within the unit, you know. And then also we have our property clean five to 10 times uh, a month, you yeah. know. So it's going to be in tip top shape right. versus All like you have someone random in there for a full year. You And not, they beat it up. You have no idea what's happening with your property. They might you never know? clean it. And that's, might a, never clean it at that's all. a super appealing argument to make to a landlord is, look, for us to even run this business model, this unit has to be in tip top shape because right. we're looking for five star reviews from each and every guest that stays in here. Our success is predicated on those reviews. Right. On a so, clean, orderly, functional, mechanically sound property. 100%. Exactly. Yeah. Another thing that we do is, um, you know, the first Monday of the month, we do a full walkthrough with the landlord. You know, he gets to see what it really looks like. And you know, he's astonished, like, okay, this is way better than anything else I've, I've been doing. You know, I'm making more money. I don't have to worry about my unit. He doesn't even do the walkthroughs anymore. You know, mm -hmm. now Love he's trying that. to offload like three or four more units to us. He just trusts you. Fully. Yeah, he just trusts us it's now. Huge. Right. You know, did, so, so did you rehab that property? We didn't. Nope. He, so you, he rehabbed it before we got okay. in there. So you sure. identified one that was basically ready for you. Um, it needed some work. Okay. Um, and it was, it was on the market for a little bit. And, um, you know, he said, Hey, I'll, I'll put 500 to a thousand dollars into it. We sign a two year lease and, you know, go from there. Yeah. I got one more. That and works. then I'll, I'll, I this guy's full of I'll it's all good. I'll it's all back. good. I love it. I love it. We just kicked off the morning with like learning. So I'm just like, <laughs> let me get good. as much as I can. Um, so you said you're scaling up to 10 now, 10 properties. We have 12 total. 12. Yep, 12 they're total. all STRs okay. yep, in the last 12 months. Yep. Wow. That's fast. What is your strategy for management? of all these properties right now my beautiful wife bless her heart she's doing it all herself she wow. is very much the backbone of the business um i would say we she allocates maybe 30 minutes to an hour per week on each property okay um because it's not very much it's not it's not much but as you can realize you know this is it's starting to be a full-time job yeah, in sure. itself you know so uh we're we're training two individuals um hopefully they'll start co-hosting and we can offload that to them as well uh, but right now my wife is doing it. We have a lot of automation and software mm -hmm. integrated to where, you know, she's not doing too much work, but, mm -hmm. um, you know, we have to remove her pretty soon. And she, so mainly though, she has to organize all the other people, yeah, like the cleaners and yeah. the repairmen and whatever needs exactly. to do and communicate with guests and all that stuff, right? Exactly. Okay. Yep. She, she coordinates with the uh, cleaners, handymen, um, and then she does all the guest communication. How have you bought the 12 in the past? Like, what structure of loans or how are you buying those? Or is it all rental arbitrage? No, no. Um, so we've used uh, vacation home loans uh, okay. where you only have to put 10% down instead. So like of a you, second you, home. Yeah, like a second home yeah. loan. Uh, we've used capital partners. Uh, we use private money um, and uh, DSCR loans. Um, so just uh, asset-based loans mm -hmm. instead of having to qualify for DTI. So there's plenty of loan products that we can leverage to continue to scale. So those, the last ones you mentioned, the uh, debt service coverage, those seem hard to me because a lot of lenders that we've spoken to about this aren't going to look at the Airbnb short-term rental income. They're going to look changing. at traditional That's income. changing. There, changing. There's some okay. lenders out there. Yeah. Yep. Okay, really? Yep. There's okay. some lenders That's out there me. Yep. that'll look at you guys have heard of air dna yeah yeah, yeah. so oh, yeah. they'll they'll use the the data from air dna and analyze it based on those numbers that's huge it's yeah. huge. because that's been a big roadblock where they especially see, for you guys in yeah luxury, i mean even though tough. we have a property that sleeps 12 people that's right. decked out they see rental comps in the traditional space as four thousand a month let's say something conservative i'll right. put you guys in touch uh, with some lenders that'd, that'd be fantastic yeah. yeah i was just trying to look through our my text thread with our partners on the short-term rentals now we Jason just sent something over the other day for short-term rental loans. Great. Yep. And I thought that was super interesting because we're asking lenders and even our hard money lenders and everyone else, and they're saying we can't use them. And then someone sent us in the chat the other day. Because they don't pencil yeah. when you just look at It's a newer product, rates. though. It's a newer product. So, I mean, yeah. that's why it's not too familiar with a lot of people. It's not very prevalent yet. Right. Once you get in, though, if you get one that has permits out here in Vegas, oh. and you're one of the 2,800. Right. Right. It's, it's an ATM. Yeah, Limited it's supply. An ATM, yeah. It's an ATM. I think, Incredible. personally, this is one of the best cities in the country yeah. to yeah. Airbnb 100%. homes. 100%. I yeah. agree with that. 
we kind of took a gamble this year and we're like, okay, if the rules and regulations come out in July, the, in July is not the time to decide to then go find a house and buy a house and renovate it and then go to permit it. You're going to be super, yeah. super late. You're going to be the last in line. And so we all decided to take a gamble and basically like buy five of these houses, renovate them, get them all ready, dialed in. Come July, we're the first ones in line. It's a good gamble. Yeah. Let me ask you something. What do you think about the market now? And do you think that these loans are going to stick around with where the market's going and interest rates and everything else? Because I think that's going to be a big question mark on our hard money loans as flippers. They're already starting to increase from the national hard money lenders. Are, are these products going to stick around with the market? So for second home loan, we were in the mid threes on interest rate. Mm -hmm. That same rate, same product at a similar credit score is going to be mid sixes now. Yeah. And that was like November timeframe. And so the DSCR is probably seven, eight. And so at what point is it going to even be profitable, right? If you're at 11% yeah. interest on a DSCR product, I mean, that's not really going to cash flow. So that's the million dollar question. It's like, how far can we push the rates before pricing is going to be impacted? Right. I mean, the beautiful thing about short term rentals, the cash flow is so significant right yeah. now, even at seven, eight percent, we're we're making tons of money. You right. can still absorb some of that. Yeah. 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 I mean, 100%. some some of some of our properties are grossing 10K a month. Um, nothing like a luxury property would. But, you know, when you have 12 of those it starts to bring in some good money. Sure. You know? Yeah. I mean, short term rental or not, I don't think five, six percent rates in general are that high. I mean, nope. I bought my house in 2017. My rate was four and a half percent. If it was another point higher or point and a half higher, still I still would have bought, 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 yeah. bought totally. the house. Totally. We're stuck in recency bias. We're, we're, yeah. we're used we're to spoiled. that 2.8%, 3% percent, percent just recently. Which was ridiculous free money given out yeah. by right. the government. Like that, yeah. that was never going to stick anomaly, around. That was, that was you know. And thankfully, we took advantage, right? right. So <laughs> some no, people didn't. We used as much of that as we could. Right. <laughs> so I think we're going to be okay. Obviously, we'll see a little bit of a slowdown and a little bit of a correction. But yeah. if it goes to eight and it could, that might make a difference. But it's I still mean, there's still no supply, though, right? No so supply. So how are we going to fix that issue? It's been a concern where, okay, rates go up. Obviously, they're doing what they're supposed to do and slow things down. Right. So it's obviously happening. We can see that it's going to continue to happen. Right. And now that they just broke down like the average home, Four, basically 400,000, 391,000. That average home, which speaks to almost every average buyer, first time home buyer, where they're not buying a house, they're buying a payment. You talk to any lender, it's like you're trying to fit yourself into the payment Absolutely. on what you make monthly and everything with your income. So the house doesn't really matter. It's what can I afford in my monthly payment? And when things go up, like rates, a few points, the few hundred dollars of an increase in your payment really puts them out of the game because they're just trying to fit into that $1,900 month payment. If it goes to $2,300, that's all of a sudden, not, that's out of my budget. Game changer. Can't afford yeah. that. So that's going to shake up those buyer pools. Most of our flip properties are what we would consider to be luxury properties out here, so a million plus. Sure. And those people when they're buying a house and they want to buy a house, they're not so confined by a five or a six or a 7% rate. Yeah. They have the money to, if they need to put 150,000 down or 250,000 down, they have the money to be agile. They're not all of a sudden disqualified from buying a $2 million house Makes because sense. a right. rate went up half a percent. They can adjust themselves. So that kind of made me feel good. How are you guys finding your deals? So we're primarily on market MLS focused. Yeah. Oh, gotcha. We've been that way since we started and we've probably found 99% of all of our homes on the market. We'll buy, we'll buy some from the, from wholesalers. wholesalers. Yeah. Yeah. But our marketing budget on a monthly basis for acquisitions is $0. So where do you go from here? Right. Cause you've already tapped into such a, like a high end luxury market. So what's the next move? So one thing that we've done recently, and I think we'll continue to do that over the next few years is to find other good areas where we can tap into the luxury market. Yeah. So Scottsdale's super close. Uh, you spent a lot of time out there. Mm -hmm. We have some friends out there. We have some contacts out there. And so we recently bought $2 million flips out there that are currently in progress. And so figuring out how to basically just pick up copy and paste what we have here out into another market. And then maybe this year or next year, Scottsdale turns us another dozen luxury flips. And then we find another one and we and go do Orlando, it another dozen somewhere. Know, in Orlando. <laughs> no, <laughs> honestly, I think the way to do it, because we've contemplated how to go into a different market for 
a while now. And the way that we finally figured it out and using, you know, the Bokley Brothers Academy and the people within it and the and partnerships in our network and social media is JVing with people, partnering with people. I think that's the best way for us to expand other markets is just partner with people that, you know, if they can't be brand new, of course, they got to know what they're doing, mm -hmm. but we could add value to their business and they add value to ours quite a bit as well. And that's, that's what we think is going to really help us expand. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're looking at luxury, my wife and I, as yeah. the next step, you know, it just makes sense. This, the time allocation is ex exactly the same, mm -hmm. you know, running the numbers, managing the gas, so everything is exactly the same, but just like you alluded to, the spread is much higher. Yeah. Like just another comma. That's yeah. it. Yeah. What are some of the like hoops you have to jump through to obtain a legal Airbnb out there? Let's say you found a new property. Is it, do they have setbacks? It's not difficult. Yeah. You need a, a, a license with the state. Okay. Um, you need a permit with uh, the county that you're in. Um, sometimes depending on what county you're in, um, the insurance has to come out. You know, they uh, implement like emergency lights and smoke detectors and whatnot. Safety right. stuff. Yeah, right. yeah, safety stuff like that. Um, but it, it's, it's not difficult. It's yeah. So good. you guys asked us, but I flip it back on you guys. So now that you've, you kind of mentioned you're a new team, just teamed up, what is on the horizon? Like, what are you going to try to go after this year, next year? What are you trying to build together? Yeah, just trying to, you know, maximize the direct to seller marketing, um, you know, wholesale a ton, um, mm -hmm. flip, start flipping, uh, hold a bunch. We want to do a lot of short term rentals. Um, my wife is included in this partnership as well. Mm -hmm. So we want to have 100 properties all across the world in cities that we want to travel to frequently. Like, love that. You I know, love that. There's going to be a vacancy rate with all those hundred properties, right? Always. There's going to be 15 to 20% vacancy. Sure. We want to put families in there that are less fortunate, mm -hmm. you know, just, just have a vacation completely free. Love you that. Know, most of these properties, if it's in Aspen, yeah. what a cool vacation it would be. They never get to go there. They never get to go there. Right. Yeah. Or near Disney World, you know, right. we partner up with Disney World and they give us a hundred free tickets that we can share with these families. That's you know? awesome. Love that. So, I mean, the philanthropic side of it, I mean, we can't wait to get, get involved. In that. I've never heard of, of even like, trying to strategically fill those gaps that way. You That's can't fantastic. monetize it anyways. Right. Yeah. Right. You can't it's do anything. It's just sitting vacant. Lost time, you know, yeah. there, there's Lost kids that, it. you know, are facing terminal ill cancer sure. or, you know, diseases or, you know, poverty sure. or whatever the case may be. They yeah. never have a vacation. That might be the last time that they have a, a vacation yeah. or the first mm -hmm. time they have their vacation. So. Or a family where the parents work their ass off and they still can't afford to take their exactly. three or four kids to Disneyland. I mean, yep. it's, it's awesome. I love to hear yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, because like, you know, once we all have the money, right, what do you do with it? Yeah. The, you know, there's no more aspirations. What are you going to keep trying to make more money? Stuff in right. your pockets. Yeah. Right. So like, we, you know, we have to give back. I mean, 100%. So mm -hmm. we can add that we also are doing some education. So we were inspired by you guys on the YouTube channel cool. and we're now getting into our own podcast and some short form content. I know for me, I didn't know anyone personally when I started. And so I relied on you two bigger pockets and a lot of education, reading books. And so my thought was to give back in that way. Right. So we have a community that we're building locally in Orlando and really the goal is just to help people, you know, help newer investors, try to get them educated, you know, not make the same mistakes that we did. And so um, that's really what we're working on now as well. That's huge. So to all the viewers out there, where can they find you guys? Where can they find the education in the podcast? Let's let everyone know your Instagram sure, handles, sure. TikTok handles. So I'm at Aiden Grohl, A-I-D-A-N-G-R-O-L-L. -L, and we are at Blue Gems TV on TikTok and IG and as well as YouTube. Yeah, and I'm Mr. Bullock spelled out. So M I S T E R dot Bullock B is in boy U L L O C K on I G. Nice. Awesome. Well, we appreciate you you guys coming on today, reaching out to us all the way from Florida. Absolutely. It's a lot of fun. If you guys have any questions for these two gentlemen, they're killing it in the short term rental game. Drop a comment below. They're always happy to answer. We're always happy to answer. We'll link you up with them. Yeah. Till then, we'll see, see you on, on the flip, flip side. side.